Hi. I don't know what to call you. I said it before when we were talking briefly. I was like, how do I start a casual 10 minute conversation with someone who I'm ridiculously nervous talking to? And I can't call you John, but let me pause. Let me start by saying thank you for joining me. And uh, I'm excited to do this. I, I think we're calling it Dr. Taylor Takes 10. So I'm comfortable then saying this is Dr. John Austin. So we'll start as doctors. Hi, Dr. Austin. Hey, how are you? I'm good. Thank you for being here. I'm going to go quick because we really are going to do this in 10 minutes. So I'm, I'm calling you John in the same way that I'm not going to introduce you in a formal way. So for everyone watching right now, we wanted to put together a conversation with a clear expert that we can get in 10 minutes and hit some important topics that we think might not be coming right now, even though there's a ton of amazing stuff that's coming out right now. So I did ask John to make it casual, but turns out Kalamazoo is not as comfortable as uh, Malibu, California. So, uh, so I, I give him a break for the fancy background. All right. But this is John Austin. You guys have to go to the description. That is where we give the full bio and a bunch of links to resources. In particular, I really recommend you check out, he has a landing page for a free web webinar on conflict. But I thought of John because I thought, all right, we're doing a bunch of different stuff. I'm fortunate enough to know some amazing leaders in our field that have been contributing across a number of topics for a long time and not to age us, but I did first meet you, John, what, 20 years ago, I think, right? So in the midst of all this, I'll make this brief. It was, right? I know, I know. Uh, in thinking about different topics with what we're dealing with, and as I'm sitting in this uh, very casual, long, cherry kind of thing, I flashed on work that cost him a while back on ergonomics and thought, well, I know there's a bunch of clinicians that are now tied to their desks and we're however many weeks into this, so we're probably going to start to see some concerns around that. So I thought, I wondered if I could ask you, John, to, to talk about some tips on that and then in a kind of thought process and in a brief call that John and I had, uh, I realized as well, well, we can do a lot in 10 minutes, right? So maybe you can pop on to some leadership stuff as well, since I know that's really your major focus now, and I don't need to bring up research from forever ago, because that's what I thought of, but I know I'm increasingly uncomfortable with the leader title lately, and any tips to help me through that as well would be really appreciated. But So on that note, I, I, I don't want to make it too interview. It's supposed to be a conversation, but I guess I'm going to start with, hey, John, can you talk to us about what's going on right now and your thoughts on those topics that I just threw out there? Yeah, sure. Um, well, thanks for having me, Rachel. Um, and uh, it's great to see you again. It's good to see you. Uh, so, uh, you know, on ergonomics, I mean, we published a whole series of papers, I don't know, probably 15 years ago um, that, that anybody can look up. And like ergonomics is a study in itself, right? Like it's a PhD level topic. So, you know, I will just hit a, a few high points uh, that we might consider. And um, th we're going to share a resource as well that's a, that's a quick and easy video that will help you with a desk setup. Um, but like the high points really are setting your, your chair height. That's the first thing. And your chair height should be at a, at a height where you have a uh, 45 degree angle um, between your, your upper arm and your lower arm, your forearm. So you want to shoot for like a 45 degree angle and your feet flat on the floor. I love you're saying this as I'm like crossing my legs, but keep going. <laughs> Sorry. Everybody gets self-conscious. When we gave talks at conferences on this, you'd see everybody start fidgeting around. Oh, that's funny. That Putting makes your sense. Feet flat on the floor. And then secondly, after the chair height, you want to adjust your monitor height so that it is the top of the monitor is parallel or level with the, your eyes. Okay. And so like, that's the idea. The, the biggest problem that most people run into, like me, is we work on laptops and then you you find yourself looking down and then you get neck pain and back pain and it, it causes a big problem uh, over time. Um, you know, when you're young, you're invincible, but you know, when you get, when you start to age a little bit or you work a lot of hours, it, it's, it'll, it'll wear on you. Yeah. Um, the other thing is, um, you know, two more things that they recommend is set up things on your desk so you don't have to reach for them regularly. So if you have a phone, um, don't make it so you have to kind of reach and twist and turn and stuff like that, but make it like within easy, easy access. And then finally get up and stretch every hour and, uh, and move around. And in that video that I've recommended, there are a few uh, recommended stretches that will help you out with your neck and your upper back. And your I was laughing on that last one. Cause, cause I'll own it. I, uh, 
and I'm sure like most people, I, um, I have both the teenager and the five-year-old. And fortunately, a teacher for the five-year-old, uh, one of his teachers is here helping during the day, but we're all having to go into these different rooms than we usually work in. And as you said, don't reach. I was thinking, not only am I reaching, I'm on my bed and it's a tall one and my phone is sometimes on the ground. So I'm not only reaching like this, I'm actually like going down. Like, yeah, like I'm like, this is not good. So, but in all honesty, you know, I thought of you too, because when we first met, I was at UNR, John came in as, a, uh, as an expert to, to come do presentations for us. And that's why it's the research 15 years ago that I thought of, uh, even though I know your current work. But, and I just realized listening to you right now, because I know a lot of it has to do not only with the setup, but our posture as well. And after Johnny was born, so around the time that we met uh, 16 years ago, I threw my back out for the first time. And I know it's because my ab muscles were weakened from being pregnant, but I know right now, all of us are like that too. So in addition to the setup, you know, in terms of our, our own physical behavior too, uh, thoughts on that or? Yeah, I mean, um, our, you know, so there are two components here. There's the, and there's the physical environment and then there, there's our behavior and how we interact with it. And uh, a seri uh, like a few different uh, folks that I worked with and uh, at Western Michigan University did a, did a series of studies on these, like Kathy, Kathy Kool-Aid was able to kind of pull out the difference between behavior change and posture and feedback, like behavioral feedback and changing the height of the keyboard, for example, right? And so like, you know, you want to get the environment set up, right? But then it's important to um, build strength and, um, and give yourself breaks and stuff like that because, you know, maintaining a good posture is not normal for most of us. Yeah. in that environment. Um, Siggy Sigurdsson did a whole series of studies where we, we were giving feedback to the, the user, right? And so mm -hmm. like he started with a full length mirror where you could look, you could turn your head and look at the mirror and see what your posture is, right? Yeah. And he the guides on the mirror for, for a while, you know, and then set up a camera and then he was porting in a little, you know, uh, video of the user um, onto their screen. Right. And so like, you know, video you can, feedback, video modeling, video yeah. technology, here we are oh, yeah. like ourselves and the people we're helping. It's amazing. You know, and you know, you mentioned briefly in there, you commented on taking a break and I know that's kind of in the I, I don't, ergonomic safety, but whatever we want to call that area. But you know, I mentioned at the beginning that I wanted to see if we could also move this into tips that you have for, for leaders. And I know I I'm struggling in terms of, finding dedicated time, but at the same time, keeping that, the practice that you just mentioned in terms of stretching and taking breaks, but not just for my physical well-being also, because I know I'm, I'm starting to lose it a little bit. Yeah, I know, but I lose it all the time, right? So talk to me, John. I know we're like a little more than halfway through, I think. We got a yeah. few minutes, so leaders specifically okay. in this. But. Yeah, so like this is for, this first tip is for leaders, but uh, really just anyone um, who wants to get uh, effective work done. Um, and under these situations, you know, a lot of us are working at home and stuff like that. We've got a lot of distractions. So I like to try to practice what we call 45-15. And that is, that means uh, getting 45 minutes, and you can choose the number, it's scalable, right? But like maybe 45 minutes or 50 minutes of focused work where you're not doing anything else. And you even, you know, put your phone on um, do not disturb. You close all websites and stuff like that. Oh, phone something. or internet? What are you talking about? Okay. <laughs> you really even shut off the internet, right? Yeah. Um, but you work for that just on that one thing for 45 minutes. And, and then you have to take a break. Like you can't continue to work. You get up and you move around. And, and that forces you to take a physical break, but also a mental break. And then you can, you can check email or let yourself do whatever you want, like get a snack or yeah. maybe not too many snacks, but walk around, you know. So that's, that's one tip uh, for focus. A lot of leaders come to me with, with uh, you know, the need for, like they're saying, well, I can't get any focus time. I'm constantly interrupted. And especially these days, that's even more prevalent, I think. Yeah. Um, two other things uh, that I'd recommend. Um, one is uh, for leaders who have teams that they work with or coworkers that they work with. Um, you know, commun frequent communication during these days is essential. And I think that most people have picked that up at this point. Um, but, but if I could give a tip about what it should look like, you know, the topography of that communication is important, right? Like, is, yeah. So, so every phone call that I start at this point is asking about the person and their family. And I would suggest every leader do that too. You know, how are you doing? And give the person a little bit of space. Yeah, it takes time and you can't get right to work and, and stuff like that. But, um, but it's that, that increased focus on the person 
goes a real long way in yeah. terms of making them, creating a safe space for them to tell you what's on their mind and their physical health and mental health. And you know, John, it's so crazy. And I'm going to try and keep us on time. So I think we're going to wrap up on this. I apologize, guys. There's cars, there's dogs, but I guess that comes to casualty. I hope everyone heard all the tips that John just gave. And that communication one, you know, I, I'm going to, I'm going to wrap it up because I know, again, we're going to try and keep it in 10 minutes, but I think you just inspired me to consider inviting my next speaker, which uh, is Amy Borsetti. And I know Amy, uh, for those of you not familiar with Amy, you should definitely look her up. This is someone who has a master's degree in ABA, yet works for LinkedIn now, and uh, recently presented at CASP, was an invited speaker with Dr. Austin last year at Calaba. And it's, it's funny that you brought up the communication tip because her entire talk at CASP about being leader and manager at LinkedIn, this is a month and a half ago, so not really be COVID, but really all of us being in this scenario. And uh, that was her main point, was taking that moment at the beginning of a meeting to do that personal check-in. And, and I'm laughing because I think Amy was an undergrad when you were, you were first coming up. I don't know if you were editor yet of JOBM or what, but so there you go. You're seeing this uh, lineage and this history. And, and on that, it means a ton to me, John, to have you here. I mean, your contributions to this field. And for me to start this new series with someone who isn't 100% dedicated to neurodevelopmental disorders, but the science of human behavior and alleviating human suffering and knowing that everyone has the right to a safe workplace and the approach you take to wrap that science around every interaction you have is just phenomenal. So I can't agree with you enough on all of your tips and can't thank you enough. So from the physical setting right now, guys, you gotta be thinking about that. Taking a moment to consider, obviously, how that physical setting is setting the occasion for improved behavior on your part. You know, coming in to consider, all right, how do I break up my time? You know, 45 minutes focus work. I love the 45, 15, but I like how you said that might be adjusted. Everything's individualized, right? Yeah, just making sure that we're communicating with people and not just, you know, here's your scheduled meeting, but how are you? What is going on? Doing that check in, whether it's the first five minutes of a group meeting or I mentioned, you mentioned to me when we briefly spoke, just pick up the phone and just start calling several times a day. No agenda, just to check in, right? I mean, is that, yeah, that's what I thought. All right, well, hopefully a kind of casual 10 minute conversation. We got close, we might've gone a minute over. That's not too bad for the first time. Hey, we're still gonna call Dr. Taylor Takes 10. This is my version of taking 10 in a horrible physical scenario though. So I will take your advice in. And thank you, Dr. Austin, so much. Everyone, make sure you check out the description. There's gonna be some, there is some great resources in there. And more importantly, I feel ridiculously awkward not acknowledging all of your accomplishments. So I'm going to embarrass him and do a longer bio, guys. Read it, get to know him, reach out, especially. And I say leaders only because I know other stuff I'm doing. I'm talking to a lot of BCBAs. I'm hoping owners come on this. And this isn't a plug for John, but it kind of is. I've been saying lately, this is the time where even though we don't have a lot of financial resources, we might we really need to accept that we need more consultation. We need more support from experts. So I don't even know if you're taking any clients. So I should have asked that before I gave you a little plug there. But uh, if not, I know Dr. Austin can always give people good referrals for uh, those of you that are managing people and trying to make sure you're doing absolutely everything you can to support your employees so that they can do the best work for the clients. So on that note, guys, this was our first take at it. Uh, thank you again, Dr. Austin. And I look forward to talking to you soon in person. I hope someday, big hug. Big hug. Thanks, Jim. Yeah. <laughs> you hang in there, all right? All right thank you. Take care. Take care.